Hey, what's up? It's Jesko again from AcousticsInsider.com, where I teach home studio acoustic treatment techniques for audio professionals, but without all the voodoo. I want to do a little addendum to last week's video, which was mix volume matters and how to set it correctly. I talked about how you can use the loudness units or LUFs on your mix bus in order to set kind of a, a target volume on your mix bus that you can always aim for to basically keep the volume constant while you're mixing. And I'll put a link in the card right now so you can watch that, why it's so important for you to do that. But I saw a, a few comments on that video and especially a, a bit of confusion about why you want to use loudness units, a loudness measurement on your mix bus to set that level. And so that's what I want to get into in this video. But before I do that, obviously none of this mix volume stuff matters if you can't hear your speakers correctly. And if you're having trouble hearing your speakers correctly, it's probably because you haven't got them set up right, right? So the typical problems that encounter if you don't have your speakers set up right is, first of all, a lack of bass or too much bass. You might have a very bad stereo image if that happens, you tend to not have a proper phantom center. And that leads to a misjudgment of space. You can't do panning properly. You can't set reverbs, delays properly. If that's something you're struggling with, then I, I want you to check out my phantom speaker test workshop that you can sign up to for free at the link in the description. This is basically a two-step process that I developed in order for you to set up your listening position and your speakers in any room, no, sh no matter what shape or size. It's a simple structured listening test that allows you to analyze the room that you're in, that you're working with, and find the best listening position, the spot where you need to place your listening position. I tend to call that the low end sweet spot because it depends on the low end in your room. You want to find that low end sweet spot in your room and place your listening position there and then set up your speakers to get that ideal stereo image that, if you do it right, almost sounds like you're working on headphones with a proper phantom center. Yeah, again, a simple two-step process that you can do in any room that will tell you where your listening position needs to go, where your speakers need to go, how far apart they need to go, how far away from your listening position you want to space them. And this works, again, in any room with any speakers. I just developed this technique specifically for that purpose for home studios because it can be really difficult to figure out where to actually place your setup. Yeah. So if that's you, if you're just starting out with a new room, if you're setting up a new room, if you're having a lot of trouble hearing your speakers properly, make sure you sign up to my Phantom Speaker Test Workshop in the link in the description. But with that, let's look at this question that I got from Mark Leswin on my video from last week. And he said, hi, Esco. I like your video on mix volume. I'm a little confused, though. If using reference tracks, reference tracks to begin with, these will be mastered to minus 16 to maybe minus 14 LUFS, etc., depending on the stream platform and such. Now you suggest to bring that down to minus 18 LUFS or lower. Why? I can turn down or up the monitor volume anyway to a nice level to work with and keep an eye on the average LUFS while I'm mixing. It might be that you want to create a mixed LUFS beginning instead of a mastered LUFS with mastered reference tracks. I hope you can see why, I'm, why I lost you there a little. So um, I, I can see why I lost you there a little. And this comes down to, I think, a lot of confusion about what loudness measurement using loudness units actually do, yeah? So first of all, let me talk about this second question, why you, why you can't just turn up or down the monitor volume to a nice level. That's the whole point of the video. I don't want you to change the monitor volume. I want you to always get a consistent volume from your speakers. And if you follow, if you follow the single chain, there are two main steps where that gets affected. In your DAW, with the mix where that sits in terms of level on the mix bus, and then just how loud you actually turn the volume on your speakers. Those two volume knobs are what affect 
what eventual volume comes from your speakers. And I want that to be constant. So you need to fix those two in place in order to get a constant volume with all music that you listen to, in fact. Yeah. So that's why you can't just turn up or down the volume to a nice level. That's exactly what I don't want you to do. So yes, your reference tracks will be in many cases now and kind of in the, this day and age will be mastered to some sort of loudness unit measurement, minus 14, minus 16. The point is, and that's I think that's something that gets confused a lot, and I see these discussions all over the place, that there's some sort of magic if you master to a certain loudness. Loudness, this measurement of loudness units, integrated loudness specifically, is still just a measure of volume. I know I'm going to get some... some <laughs> People are not going to like me saying this, but it is still just a measure of volume. It's closer matched to how we perceive volume, but it is still just a volume measurement. Why am I saying this or how can I be so sure of that? Well, why is it that you can just use the fader or a, 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 a volume knob on the mix bus in this case? If you just turn that up by three decibels, you will get three additional loudness units. If you turn it down by three decibels, you will get three less loudness units in the measurement. Yeah, it's as simple as that. LUFS is still, or loudness measurements, is still just a measurement of volume. Unfortunately, there is no perfect loudness measurement yet. This is kind of the best we have to this point but it is not a context-free measurement of loudness, unfortunately. It is still just measuring volume. But it is so much closer matched to how we perceive volume, and that's why it's a great tool to use to level match music. It's still not perfect. If you take music from different eras and you match them in terms of LUFS, and uh, you'll obviously find that that's actually quite difficult across the entire song because you'll find that the loudness, <laughs> the loudness measured in loudness units varies throughout the song. But let's just say you take three choruses from three different songs from three different eras and you loudness match them, you might still find that you don't think that they are at the same perceived loudness yeah, because it's still not perfect. It's pretty good, but it's not perfect. So if you get a reference track mastered to, let's say, minus 14 LUFS, but your target volume for your mix bus is minus 18 LUFS, then you load up the track and you turn it down by most likely four decibels and it will just end up at minus, LT, uh, minus 18 LUFS. And then you've hit your target volume on your mix bus. And if you don't mess with the volume knob for your speakers, you will get the same volume from your speakers or the same loudness, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. So that's why you want to do this. This whole, this whole idea of, of hitting a certain loudness on your mix bus from the very beginning for the purpose of having that loudness in the final master is kind of pointless. You can ma you can mix at any loudness that you want and then just use a volume knob to turn that up or down to the desired LUFS that you want before you export. Yeah, because it is still just a volume measurement, unfortunately. Yeah, so you can mix at a target LUFS of minus 30 and you can do that consistently over and over and over again and then you just turn up you just put a volume knob on as a plugin or use the fade or whatever on the mix bus you just turn that up to buy 16 decibels and you will minus 30 plus 16 end up at minus 14 lufs and then you just hit export and your mix will be at the target loudness that you need for the streaming platform. You got to understand that the reason why these streaming platforms recommend these loudness targets is because that means that the music 
is always served to you at the same subjective volume. But whether that's the, 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 the final volume that a person listens to, they will still decide on by using their volume knob. Yeah? If it's too loud, if it, I mean, you just think about when you listen to music on your headphones while you're on the go or wherever, at home, I don't care. You will set the volume that you like to listen to by using the volume knob. Sometimes you like to listen quieter, sometimes louder, and you'll change that depending on how you feel at that point and how you would like to, how loud you would like the music to sound. Yeah, so this hitting a certain target loudness isn't, isn't for the purpose of some absolute benefit. It is literally just to get consistent volume between all the music that is played to you in sequence. Yeah, and whether that's minus 14 or minus 16, whatever, doesn't matter at all. It doesn't say anything about the dynamic range of the music. Yeah, it doesn't say anything about what volume you eventually consume that music. It is literally just about keeping consistency between subsequ subsequent songs. And so you don't need to hit that while you're mixing. You can completely ignore that while you're mixing. And then just before you hit export for the final master, you just adjust the fader, the master fader, or use a volume plugin to set it to that target loudness, and you're done. Yeah, with a little luck, you'll have done your job in a way that uh, it shouldn't clip zero decibels, and you won't get any intersample peaks and all that stuff. But I mean, at minus fourteen, that's a hell of a lot of dynamic range in order for you to clip zero decibels. Yeah, so it doesn't matter at all. You can use this purely for consistency in terms of the level that you're getting on your master bus and where you put that doesn't matter. I hope that answers that question and you're not so lost with this anymore. Yeah, Don't get too confused about most of what you read on or what you hear on loudness measurements. Like 90% of the discussions that I see completely miss the point. See it as just another way to measure volume but how we perceive it, yeah? But you can still use a volume knob to set the loudness units that you eventually end up with, yeah? It's as simple as that. All right, with that, let's get back to learning to trust our ears and having fun making music in the studio. I'll see you in the next video.